Good afternoon. I'm Ernie Bauer from CSIS, and we're here today with the U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, Harry Thomas. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Ambassador. Mr. Ambassador, you, uh, you recently held the first strategic bilateral dialogue between the United States and the Philippines last week. I know Kurt Campbell, our Assistant Secretary for East Asia and the Pacific, was uh, in Manila. Could you tell us a little bit about those talks and what issues you covered and, and what came out of them? Well, thank you so much for highlighting that. I mean, uh, bilateral strategic dialogue is where the United States engages one of our strategic allies on issues of mutual concern, and it's everything from maritime security to food security to our, mu our military relationship. We want to show the Filipinos that they are partners with America across the board, and they helped us come up with an agenda of issues that they felt were important. Corruption, transparency, uh, ASEAN, South China Sea, Spratly Islands, mm. uh, where we're looking at those from the same way. We talked about human rights. Uh, we really emphasized uh, Burma and a way to go forward mm. uh, with, with, with caution. So I, uh, we're very pleased that this is the first of, uh, of our bilateral strategic dialogue. And Assistant Secretary Campbell uh, was the leader, along with Acting Assistant Secretary Mitchell from the Department of mm. Defense. And they invited the Filipinos to come to the U.S. Great, great. Uh, to continue that. So we're, we think this is going to be great. And Mr. Ambassador, that leads me to my next question. Uh, what I'd like to do is back up a little bit and look at the bigger picture. The U.S.-Philippine alliance. What, what does the alliance uh, mean? And, and how, how do you see it manifesting itself in terms of day-to-day -day, uh, foreign policy that you're conducting uh, out of the embassy in Manila? President Obama and Secretary Clinton have made it clear mm. that we are in Asia and that we need to uh, highlight our strategic relationships as well as our economic relationships with uh, Asian countries. The Philippines only makes sense. It's not only a strategic ally, but there's such a long history. Yeah. Uh, and when we look at where we want to go with the Philippines, we're saying, you come to us, you tell us what's interested. So last week while we were having the bilateral strategic dialogue, we also had the White House initiative of the Partnership for Growth, hmm. which is enhanced engagement, especially on the economic side, the Millennium Challenge Corporation, right. but really trying to get the Filipinos toward a trade and framework agreement, and then looking toward them eventually looking at a trans becoming a member of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Mm -hmm. Because we really believe if the Philippines is going to take off as other Asian nations have done, it's going to have to be through increasing economic opportunities, opening their economy. And I think they welcome those talks. And we're going to send economists out to work with them over the next few weeks to find constraints to their growth. That's great to hear because trade is, uh, we believe trade is a, is a key foundation for American foreign policy, and the Philippines uh, has seemed to be uh, lagging some of the other ASEAN countries in this area. So we, we hope they will move towards uh, membership in the, in the TPP. Speaking of economics, uh, many analysts believe that China's economic dominance uh, it's now become the, the largest trading partner uh, in the Philippines, uh, largest trading partner with many of the ASEAN countries is somehow undercutting uh, American competitiveness. What do you see from your vantage point in Manila? Are, are American companies um, losing competitiveness uh, relative to China? Uh, and if so, uh, what can we do about it? Well, Chinese ambassador is my great friend, <laughs> golf partner, and I have uh, told him and others, the United States welcomes Chinese investment. We are a trading partner, uh, however, ASEAN is a larger trading partner than China, and we need, we need both. So what we tell the Chinese and we tell the Filipinos, buy things from China, import from China, have deals with China, but make sure they're transparent, mm. corruption-free, you have an uh, open tr uh, procurement process. Uh, the Chinese are aligned with some American consulting companies. I don't think China wants to see a repeat of the ZTE where there was uh, right. corruption. Now, American companies, the biggest challenge is one-stop shopping. 
can they really get in and get a, a deal quickly? The Filipinos have said they're going to do that in the future. While what we look at is that for some American companies, it takes a long time to get into the Philippines. But once they're there, they do very well. Look at Caltex, look mm -hmm. at JP Morgan, right. uh, look at some of the energy companies that are doing so well, but it takes a little bit of time and they're, they're in a competitive environment. One of the reasons the Philippines is now in the top 15 in food and energy, food and beverage imports from the United States is because of the competitiveness of American companies. Uh, those food exports to the Philippines creates American jobs. Yeah. Just as now that we're going to take bananas and mangoes from the Philippines to the American mainland, imports to America will create jobs. Somebody has to offload, somebody has to pack. I think that American corporations, if they take a good look, especially with the new government and Secretary Parissima, Domingo, and Abad's commitment to open economy and transparency, will be fine. Would Americans be competitive in the infrastructure sector? American companies helped to underwrite the uh, PPP conference that was held, held last October. Hmm. American companies want to be in energy and infrastructure. And the PPP is? Private-public partnership. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I find my people, when they talk <laughs> about without acronyms, without uh, uh, spelling them out. So shame <laughs> on me. <laughs> I'll get fine when I get home. The, the real... Uh, thing about that is they have to issue guidelines. Yep. The executive secretary has promised us they will issue those guidelines soon. I think American companies are, are waiting for those. I think one of the challenges you have in the energy sector and other sectors is the fact that foreign ownership of land is prohibited. I think that people who worry about recolonization, those fears are misplaced. That is not something anybody in the United States is even dreaming about. Right. Uh, so uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Ambassador, let's talk a moment for, uh, about the South China Sea. The Philippines is one of the parties to the disputed territory, and there's some that believe that the there are economic resources off the coast of the Philippines. How does the Philippine interest in the South China Sea influence national security and foreign policy in Manila and in the past, it seems like the Philippines hasn't been quite consistent about their position on, on the South China Sea vis-a-vis -vis, uh, China. Could you comment on that? I think President Aquino has been steadfast in saying that the code of conduct mm -hmm. is important, okay. that negotiating through ASEAN is important. Mm -hmm. He has not backed down on that. The United States, as you know, takes no sides in this dispute. Uh, we tell the claimant states that they should sit down together, and then, then we believe they should negotiate as a group with China. China takes a different opinion. Uh, we think it's important they negotiate as a group. and If asked at any time, we would look at that. But that's something for them to do. Do the Philippines have an interest in developing their energy resources in uh, the disputed areas in the South China Sea? Sure. I think that there are Filipino companies looking at that. We have American energy companies who would be eager to partner with the Filipinos because obviously this is their territory. Right. Uh, and I think that that's why the code of conduct is so important that we keep those navigation lines open. Uh, I think that when we see other nations constructing lighthouses, know what that means in terms of international treaties. Hmm. You shouldn't construct a lighthouse on territory that's not your own. Uh, but President Aquino, Secretary of National Defense, Gazmin, I think they understand this. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Ambassador, uh, you've spent a fair amount of time in the White House uh, when, you're, when you're at the National Security Council. If President Aquino visits uh, Washington this year and, and he meets uh, President Obama, you'd probably be one of the um, people briefing the president, what three things would you tell the president uh, that he needed to be focused on before he went into that meeting with President Aquino? Well, first of all, that's it would be the president's decision whether <laughs> or if uh, any president comes here, and we'll just wait to uh, see on of that. Course. But I think what we would uh, tell our, our president 
is that the Filipinos look on him as an Asian American Pacific Islander, as a person who lived in the region, who understands them, hmm. that often we see the Filipino press uh, looking at President Obama as dynamic, as young, as committed to the future. They describe President Aquino in the same hmm. light. But what I would say to our president is Philippines are a strategic ally. We need to help increase and maintain our military relationship. We need to help open the economy because that will be good for both of our countries. Mm -hmm. And we need to maintain our bilateral assistance programs in terms of Millennium Challenge Corporation, USAID, and Peace Corps. And that we are unique in terms of having veterans that we need to honor in both of our countries that have fought uh, against uh, imperialism 60 years ago mm -hmm. and that are partnering with us to this day. And thank you very much, Ambassador Harry Thomas, and thank you for coming to CSIS. Shalom <laughs> Thank you, sir.